It's a great day to get out and grill up some burgers, but do you ever think about where your beef came from? Our verified team found out and the answer might surprise you. Here's David Schechter. Can't be half pregnant. It's either a product of USA or it's not. This is an email from Dan who says, a rancher friend of mine told me that large beef suppliers import beef from overseas and repackage it as product of the USA. Can they do that? I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like maybe they are doing that. I mean, do these cows even speak English? What is the cut? Beef tenderloin. So if you just slide your knife under there, and then in one motion, just whoosh. Doing a little butcher and training session with Matt Peterson at Matador Meat and Wine in Plano. He can tell his customers where every cut of meat in this store comes from, but he says that might not be the case at the grocery store. Is it possible to have cattle from Uruguay or something be called a product of America? Unfortunately, yes. And How does that work? Well, our government in their infinite wisdom got rid of the country of origin labeling. Country of origin labeling? What does that mean? Well, the United States Department of Agriculture requires most stores to label chicken, fish, shellfish, nuts, fresh fruits and veggies, and more, but not beef. Stores don't have to tell you where it comes from. I think it is ultimately unfair to the consumer. Again, I want to know where my beef comes from, where my honey comes from, where my tomatoes come from. In fact, as long as foreign beef is processed in the U.S., meaning cut down from a bigger side of beef into smaller cuts, it can be labeled product of the USA. I think it's intellectually dishonest from the beginning to the end. So basically he's saying beef can come from anywhere in the world into our country and we, we could call it American. Right, but when I go to buy beef, like, does that matter where yeah. it came from? Yeah, so I feel like, we, yeah, we answered part of the question, but now I want to know, like, does this matter? I mean, standing right here, I can probably identify 20 plants. Tell me what you see. I mean, here's, here's ryegrass. Here's switchgrass. Here's uh, Illinois bundle flower. What about these pink flowers? What are those? Those are... What are those, Ben? Evening Primrose. I'm talking to John Taggart, a rancher in Grandview, Texas. He says his business is hurt by the lack of labeling. He raises grass-fed beef. It's a very small percentage of the overall market and a product that some customers are willing to pay a premium for. These cattle get grass from the day they are born till the day they show up at the harvest facility. In addition to raising cattle, you're native grass farmer. That's where it starts. That's exactly what I am. Yeah. John's business is not only raising cattle, he also has a butcher operation and sells meat out of his own stores. He says cheaper grass-fed beef imported from foreign countries but labeled as a product of the U.S. undercuts American ranchers. If it's coming cheaper from Uruguay and it says product of USA and it says grass-fed, yes, that affects me. It does. How? because they are sourcing that product a lot cheaper. The American Grass-Fed Association says this issue hits its members particularly hard. While 9% of conventional beef is imported, 75 to 80% of grass-fed beef is imported, and it can be labeled as a product of the USA. So that's who I'm competing against. And can be generally called American. Yeah, it is, absolutely it is. This one's chicken. Hey, hey, chicken. Missy Bonds runs a ranch out in Saginaw, Texas, and she has the opposite opinion. She's a board member with the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. Is it deceptive to have meat that's raised in another country, slaughtered in another country, and just finished off here to call that an American product? Most of what the product that is coming in as is coming in to meet the demands for hamburger production. Okay, let's talk about hamburgers. Cattle with ample fat are worth more than skinny ones. And Missy says what comes from foreign countries are skinnier animals. According to an estimate by an economist at Oklahoma State, 72% of cattle imports go toward hamburgers. The leaner meat is mixed with fattier domestic meat to meet America's enormous demand for low-cost hamburgers. 
Missy says all beef in this country is government inspected and safe to eat, but tracking and labeling where beef comes from would just add to the cost. It is okay if you would like to know that your meat came from down the road, but in order to feed a, a expanding global nation, we have to be able to f produce in larger scales. If the idea behind all of this is that hamburger is cheaper when we don't have to label where it comes from, I get that. We eat a ton of hamburger, but that's not all that's happening. We verified that the United States allows beef from anywhere to be called American when it's really not. And that can be hard on ranchers like John, and it's just not being honest with consumers. If you've got something you want verified, send me an email.